Uh, I'm just checking the fluids on the jersey, mostly the oil and stuff like that, and kind of want to give you a little up, update slash backstory on what's going on with, the, with this car. Well, initially when I bought the car, right, I was just going to fix it up a little bit so I could sell it off and get you know, a different car, but, you know, after driving it for a little while, you know, just dailying it, etc., um, car's kind of grown on me, um, knock on wood, uh, knock on wood, or in this case sheet metal, um, the car's been relatively reliable, only had a couple of issues, like the, uh, crank system going out, and I think a fan belt flew, flew off of this thing at one point, but, uh, yeah, this thing's been pretty, uh, solid, but, um, one, glaring issue that this car has is that it's slow like very slow um, now this is a naturally aspirated uh, VG30 uh, it's a 3 liter V6 um, single overhead cam uh, two valves per cylinder I don't know what the other things are but it makes it made back in 1986 brand new it made 160 horsepower at the crank at the flywheel that is kind of was was relatively normal for back in the day because even back in the day the four cylinders only made like 90 horsepower and this makes 160 but nowadays it's drivable but uh it could be better so what i plan on doing is putting a turbocharger on it, or some type of form of horse induction on this there's uh, multiple ways I'm gonna go about doing that think about going about doing that I think what I'm most likely gonna do is just put factory turbo components on it I already got a lead on the on the driver side uh, exhaust manifold and a stock turbo that has the oil lines the water lines the couple of vacuum lines on it and the downpipe then uh, I'm gonna see if I could you could run a stock uh, turbo ECU or see if I could get a pre made, ex uh, pre -made uh, wiring harness to run a Mega Squirt 2 on it. I really would like the Mega Squirt 2 just because you know I'll be able to control what the car is doing. That will let me grow in case I want to put an even bigger turbo on it or you know some other stupid ridiculous stuff I want to do or decide to do later on in the future but uh I've also know that uh in the early 2000s early to mid 2000s you can get a Nissan Frontier or Nissan Exterior that has a um, supercharged version of this engine uh, it is a VG33 so it's, it is a little different it's obviously a little bigger but they, they come stock with the Eaton uh, M62 blower. And yeah, the Eaton 62, M62 blower is kind of small. Especially for a, v, a V6. But I might be able to adapt a M90 from, say, the Buick or whatnot on it. Uh, pros and cons to that. Pros is it's a supercharger. So to boost the boost will come in very uh, predictably it will drive very predictably, predictably. and if uh, let's say I'm trying to ex for some reason I start off in like third gear or second gear by accident I won't be pushing too much boost at a low RPM which will make tuning a little easier downside to it it sticks up it will stick up about that high off the engine and I'll have to modify the hood, much like I do with the truck. Which isn't that big of a deal, because I do have like a, a scoop that could go right there to kind of clearance it out. But, you know, that's where the turbo comes in that will literally just replace all this air stuff on the side. And it will sit down in there. I still got to research on how it work, how it's going to work, because uh, I really don't know how it's going to work. I would think it will go on the passenger side because it's more on the passenger side, but the passenger side also has a little 
wires and stuff are, the fuse box, the battery, etc. So, I have to figure that out. Also, if I could run a more modern turbo, let's say a used turbo, but a more modern turbo, that would be better. That way I don't have to worry about having to have the car sit for a while as it cools down and turn it off. I could literally just turn it off like normal. But it is what it is. I'll figure that out in the future. This is literally just to get more mid-range RV on, like, trying to merge onto the highway or, you know, trying to uh, beat a red light or something like that. Basically make it feel a little more bothered. That's why I wouldn't mind just the factory turbo stuff, because naturally aspirated engines, I think, have, like, 9.0 to 1 compression. And just adding like six pounds of boost to about ten pounds of boost, still perfectly safe for a '93 pump gas, which is what I have available. Um, it'll it should bring it up to about 200, 210 minus 30 years. So you know, theoretically, it'd be by about 210 ish. Um, the stock. A factory turbo engine, I think, makes 7.8 to 1 compression, which is very low. And they made 200 uh, flat, so I'll imagine that I'm having a little bit more compression with the same boost, same amount of boost, which I believe, like I said, was 6.8 pounds. I'm going to say around about 7 pounds. Uh, should be about 210, 220. And that's very well in, within the range of the stock clutch. I might have, I'm going to change this clutch anyway because this one's worn a little bit. But say if I put another stock clutch in it, it'd be well within the range of that. And I already have the better radiator. I'm still running the mechanical fan, which is fine. I'm, I'm, I'll deal with the mechanical fan. Uh, but I'm still running the stock radiator and everything. Obviously, I'm probably going to have to change the stock airbox. Or at least the tubing going to it. And uh, I'm going to have to change the exhaust up because the two and a quarter inch pipe coming off factory exhaust is too uh, small for a turbo. I think they really want to be like around three inches. But what I might do is off the down pipe, I'll have the elbow come down. Then I'll have it wide off the two, two and a quarter inch exhaust. That way I know it will fit underneath the car and kind of have like a pseudo dual, pseudo dual exhaust. Now I'll just get two, two different mufflers, well, two mufflers of the same type, but um, that's, that's the plan with this car, is basically just make a little more power than what it is, um, just stay up to date, because uh, the next, the very next video on this car, I hope will be getting the AC working, because like I said, this is going to be, this is pretty much my daily driver, and I would really, really like it to have the AC working. Um, I have a new condenser, well, I use condenser to be put in. And I have, um, uh, what they call straighter valves coming in the mail, screw on straighter valves coming in the mail to adapt this to a 134A. And um, I just have to get the pump and the gauge set as well as the, the refrigerant and maybe a little bit of oil. Yeah, um, hopefully that works. I've always tested out the AC compressor to see if that uh, turns on and off. And the clutch does move, and obviously it moves pretty smoothly. So, I know at least the AC, the electronics of it works. And you turn the switch, the fan on, and the RPM of the engine comes up a little bit. So, that's all good. But, uh, all like the turbo stuff and everything that will come that hope that'll probably be a few weeks because like I said the exhaust manifold that I need to run the turbo on it I can find used for like 140 bucks with the turbo I found one listing and they want 450 bucks for it which is not bad at all considering it has a downpipe and all the wires and everything hoses um, that's still good bit still good bit money 
And like I said, if I go with the mic Mega Squirt, that's six hundred dollars for the ECU, then whatever else I need to run the Mega Squirt on this engine, which would be by GM sensors, a map sensor somewhere. Um, is uh, if I do Mega Squirt, I'll get rid of the the mass airflow sensor over there and just use map the map and uh have to upgrade the tps to be uh more like a potentiometer that way it'll know exactly how far i'm into the throttle was um i believe the stock maps uh tps sensor is either it's connected when it's off and it's connected there's three pins and the middle pin connects to one pin when there's no throttle when the throttle is closed and it'll connect to the other pin that wide open throttle so you don't know when the throttle is fully shut or fully open obviously that's not enough for a real accurate uh, uh, fuel mapping especially with throttle enrichment now if I use the stock mass airflow sensor that's not much of a problem because that will automatically read more that will compensate for that but if I could get rid of one sensor or multiple sensors, that'd be great. That would simplify everything, but that's all possibilities. So if I can go with just putting a stock turbo ECU on it, because I'm using, like I said, got all factory components, factory boost pressures and everything, then that's really just a, a plug and play swap. So. Well, at least I'm hoping it is. I'm not sure if the wire connections are the same. But I'll figure that out as I go along and do some more research. But anyway, keep up to date on... Subscribe to keep up to date on the on the Z, which I'm going to call the, the Turbo Z Project. Then stay up to date for more truck videos, which I got some going on. I just wanted to take a break from it because eh, I don't want to load up the channel with a bunch of truck videos then I got one or two videos planned for the Buick mostly some minor stuff but uh, yeah so yeah just um, you don't know what to do like comment subscribe um, follow me on Twitter my username be in the description Really just be safe, have fun, and don't forget to take waitress.